My name is Richard Stewart. I was born in 1945 in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, and I own the private rail car, privileged to own the private rail car, Francis L. Souter, which was named by the previous owner, but it's a 1914 Pullman heavyweight business car. It actually weighs 90 ton, 180,000 pounds. It was his car to go, the chief operating officer of the Pennsylvania Railroad, to use to go to see his customers, check on the projects, check on his workers, entertain new customers. So it's pretty much a self-contained house as opposed to a typical passenger car that can hold anywhere from 60 to 90 people per car. This would hold a 12 to 15. It includes a full-size parlor, in fact a riding platform, two bedrooms, a dining room, kitchen, sleeps total of six plus two crew. The operating officer and his secretary would travel the various routes on the Pennsylvania system. The secretary would provide typing skills and telephone skills to, to arrange appointments and all, like a typical uh, secretary does today, but in those days it was all mail. I've owned the car for a total of seven years. It's uh, starting my eighth year now. And I have taken it on the road uh, several years. I even reached like 7,500 7, miles of travel on the rails. Some of the places I've been to was uh, North Carolina, Charlotte. We've been to Burlington three times, been to Chicago, and also to Florida. Um, we were invited down by the Lake Obechobee, and I may not be pronouncing that correctly, but there's a plantation, sugarcane plantation there, where the current owner found the actual 1920 steam engine that was used in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. He brought it back to the plantation. It was pretty much a rust bucket, but he completely refurbished it, got it certified, and uses it uh, to entertain his customers. So it was pretty neat because a 1914 Pullman was being pulled around the plantation by a 1920 steam engine, which was six years younger than the Pullman car. Well, I've always had an interest in trains. As a little kid, of course, I had a model American Flyer that uh, ran around the tree. But uh, as I grew older and eventually in the retirement, I had heard about private railroad cars. I had no clue how to go about finding one. Um, my son was also, you know, chip off the old block. He loved trains and we got talking about it and found this car, uh, provided me with the name and location. I found the internet site. I sent off an email thinking I would never hear from the owner. And lo and behold, an hour and a half later, I get a phone call. He was not interested in selling this car, but he invited me to and my son to see the car, to get familiar with it, and allow me to get some ideas on how I could go about buying a private railroad car. It was quite a day uh, uh, being the first experience on the rail car for me and my son. We, you have to imagine, it was a cold January day. Uh, temperatures in zero, wind chills below. We came on the car, my son took an early lunch. We, the previous owner, as I told him later, he pretty well set me up. <laughs> the rail car was completely toasty warm. He gave us a nice tour. He had a roaring fire in the fireplace. We sat down and started talking about the rail car. And before we realized it, we never ate lunch. Uh, we looked at the clock, it was 5.30 in the afternoon. My son never made it back to work. I was late getting home, but uh, I told uh, the previous owner, I asked him if it would be okay to bring my wife out to get her approval. And sure enough, uh, he agreed to it. And a couple of weeks later on a Saturday, we came and pretty much relived the same experience. Uh, although he wasn't uh, about to sell it at that time, I did, uh, he did help me find other rail cars that were potential sales and I talked to several people, actually saw many rail cars, came up with a four page questionnaire to kind of level the playing fields, uh, more for an education for myself but to treat each of the rail cars equally. 
Um, returning from Arizona, one of the cars I was looking at, the previous owner called me and said he would agree to sell the car to me. Uh, I had to ask him if it was still on the rails or not, but uh, <laughs> he said, yes, it, it was, it was in good shape. He had had a, uh, someone else that was also interested in the rail car and actually uh, paid for a round trip to California and back. About halfway through it, uh, the gentleman's wife came on board and within a day or two, she said uh, no to the purchase. And that opened the door for me. My wife was quite interested in it. And here we are seven plus years later, enjoying traveling the country and enjoying entertaining our friends, neighbors, and completely new people that are interested in rail travel. One of the reasons we're here outside of Newport News, Virginia, in Fort Eudis, an army base, is to help uh, a nonprofit organization called the Military Railroad Society get started. This is their first year, and they asked for a couple private cars to join them. They've been very gracious to us here, and we, we uh, last weekend was our first weekend, and I'm told it was quite successful especially the ticket sales for this car, which uh, had a premium price, but uh, no one complained. And even several people told me as they were leaving, it was worth the extra money. So we wish the Military Railroad Society success, and we hope to come back again as soon as we can.